So, hello everybody. So, I would like to wish you a happy Chardonnay Day for today. Uh, I'm Tibor Rock, working for La Chablisienne uh, since now one year and uh, living in Chablis since uh, five years, working for different Chablis winery. So, it's a perfect uh, day to enjoy a glass of Chablis because uh, Chablis is 100% uh, Chardonnay. So in Chablis, you can find only white wine and only from Chardonnay grape. So it's very important because we do that in Chablis since many, many, many centuries and years. So we have, I think, the best uh, Chardonnay. And uh, we have a very interesting soil coming from uh, Portlandian, so very, very old, and giving this uh, typical style of Chardonnay. So just to talk about La Chablisienne. So La Chablisienne has been created in 1923. It was just after World War I and uh, there was no man to work on the vineyard. So it's a woman who decided to merge everything and uh, to create La Chablisienne. So today La Chablisienne uh, is running 1,200 hectares. So we represent around 25% of the appellation. And uh, we are present on all levels of appellation. So Petit Chablis, Chablis, Premier Cru, and Grand Cru. Today, we are going through Petit Chablis with the first level of appellation in Chablis. Do you have any question about the region of Chablis? To help you to locate the Chablis region, we are on the north of Burgundy, around 100 uh, kilometers south of Paris. I can share with you a map. Angela, could you confirm me you see the map? Okay. So, this is a Chablis vineyard in total 5,000 hectares. So as I told you, La Chablisienne own 1,200, so around 25%. Everything you see in yellow, it's Petit Chablis vineyard. So it's basically located on the top of the hill. And we have this kind of soil. I will show you after. It's a Portlandian soil. Then in orange, it's a Chablis appellation. In the dark orange, it's Premier Cru, and you can see the Grand Cru Hill. So it's seven different Grand Cru. La Chablisienne own a very special uh, Grand Cru called Chateau Grenouille, who mean a frog in English. And just to show you the soil of uh, Petit Chablis. So it's a limestone. It's a very typical soil. Actually, it's a fossil. It's an uh, old uh, shell, so typical from uh, Portlandian soil. And then we can go on the tasting. Yeah, we can start with the tasting. All right. Um, so if everybody wants to pour their glass right now, it would be the great time so that you can follow with Thibaut. Um, all right, he already has a glass porter. So if you guys have any questions, once again, you can either send the questions through the chat on the side or use your raise hand option, the digital option that is available on uh, Zoom. Uh, so just before we start the tasting, I just wanted to ask um, Thibault something regarding the presentation that you said for the Petit Chabis. So you said this limestone soil. Uh, what does the limestone soil bring to the vines compared to different other soils you can find? Okay, so in Chablis, we have this particularity with uh, all the fossils. So this kind of limestone will bring uh, minerality on the wine. And uh, in Chablis, the uh, typicity of the wine and how you can recognize a wine from Chablis, it's because of this minerality. So we can call Chablis a rock wine, rock juice, like if you press very strong a rock, you will have a Chablis going uh, down. So it's a typical tips to recognize Chablis wine. And it's unique. Uh, if you compare Chardonnay from Chablis or Chardonnay from California or other parts of the world, 
the most important to recognize chablis will be the minerality and also the dryness. Okay, all right. Thank you for clarifying that. All right, so I think everybody has a glass of chablis right now, petit chablis, and we can go on with the tasting. Okay, so cheers. Uh, let's go on the tasting of petit chablis, pas si petit. So it's uh, at La Chablisienne, we have uh, two different cuvées of uh, Petit Chablis. And the Petit Chablis Passy Petit is the highest cuvée. So the vinification, it's 100% stainless steel tank. We do that because we want to keep the freshness, the, the minerality, and the dryness to have a typical and uh, easy drinking wine and typical style from Chablis. Uh, Passy Petit in English means not so small because we think our Petit Chablis have the level of uh, Chablis. And we take care a lot about, about uh, this appellation and we want to have a very easy drinking and everybody can enjoy a Petit Chablis on a warm day with some friends. It's a very perfect wine. So to go on the tasting, so the color is uh, pale green. And on the nose, you will smell note of pear, apple, kind of green apple. But when it will be old, like if you have a Petit Chablis from 2015, 16, you will have some note of honey with a very nice tasting note. If you go on the tasting, you can, you will easily uh, feel this uh, minerality with typical from Chablis. Uh, it's going on the mouth very easily and also all the notes of fruit. So Petit Chablis is located on the top of the hill. So we have a very fresh wine and uh, it's perfect pairing if you have this with uh, some finger food or salads, it's perfect. And uh, so, as I told you, vinification 100% stainless steel tank. We do a aging six months on lease. So we want a very finished wine. So it's not like two months or three months age on lease. We keep it six months. Okay, so uh, you mentioned something that the aging on lease. Um, what does the lee aging going to bring to the wine? So you like to keep the minerality from the, the soil that brings it to the grape, the freshness, but what are the lees going to bring? The, I think the most important, it would bring uh, complexity. Complexity, it's all this flavor you can feel on the mouth. Uh, it's all this minerality also due to the tank. We use tank because uh, tank is a uh, stainless steel tank. It's neutral. So it's not like oak who will bring a vanilla note or oaky note. Uh, tank, it's very neutral. So we keep the minerality and the freshness. All right. And the lees, the lees also will bring uh, aging potential. So to give you an history, a few months ago, before the lockdown, we had a very nice tasting in, uh, at the office. And uh, we tasted different Grand Cru, Premier Cru, and Chablis. And uh, we end up with a very mm, wonderful wine. Everybody was thinking it was a Grand Cru. And it was a Petit Chablis 1996. So very old. Wow, it rivals, it rivals, especially with age. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I think everybody had a taste right now. I'm just going to go around and see what you guys think of the taste so far. So I'm going to go and unmute some people. All right. I'm going to check with Mr. Let's see. With Mr. Kazuaki. All right. Mr. Kazuaki, are you ready? Let's see. Yeah, no problems. Can you Hello? hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Hi, how, how are you guys enjoying the wine? What do you guys think? Any feedback you'd like to give on Thibault? Are you guys having it with food? Is it your first time trying it? 
Um, we actually got it delivered yesterday, so we opened the first bottle last night, and uh, um, we're having the second bottle today, uh, sharing, having it with um, some cheese, some tarama salata, and more sort of uh, with tapas type of food. Uh, it's, it's really, really nice, this um, Chablis, is beautiful. Chablis is one of my favorites, so uh, you can't go wrong on this one. Thank you. Hmm. I'm glad Do you I guys are bottle? enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any questions you guys would like to ask Thibault on the Chablis region or on how uh, La Chablisienne has made this wine in general, on the soil, on the wine itself, or further food gains? Please don't hesitate to let Thibault know. All right. Okay, now third, I'll let you guys continue enjoying the wine uh, with your food. I'm going to go over and see if anybody else has some comments or questions they'd like to share. Um, can you yeah. hear us? Oh, ah. sorry. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Hi, and Thibaut, thank you so much for explanation. Hello. It's uh, Ilya, and with me is Andrea as well. We're actually enjoying the wine. We also had our first bottle last night, uh, yesterday, and the other one. Um, we just have in front of us. It's a nice and mineral wine, and we had it actually with uh, curry, uh, which worked pretty well because of the well because of the start of the wine. Question around the drinking window. You just said you had a bottle from 1997, but what would you generally advise uh, with this style of wine in terms of aging? So, so what what is the best drinking window in your perspective? So Petit Chablis is a very interesting appellation because you can drinking uh, very young. So mm -hmm. you don't have to wait two, three years or five years like the Grand Cru. If you buy a Grand Cru, you have to, yeah. like if you buy a Grand Cru today, you have to take a 2016, 17 vin vintage. Petit Chablis on the vintage 18, for example, is already good to drink. But if you like, like a very wine with a lot of complexity, it's good to wait one or two years. I think, on the Petit Chablis. On the Chablis, it will be more like three, four years, Premier Cru, five years, and Grand Cru, you can, you can have uh, like uh, 2000 or 2001. It will very depend on the vintage, but Petit Chablis is already good to drink it. Especially so it's already with... good to drink it now. Yeah, so this one is already good to drink now. Is there a maximum you would say in, in terms of how long to keep it? In no. general, we say five, six years. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, Ilya, for that interesting question. All right, so you can keep it for uh, over for, until five years. So, uh, how did you guys end up tasting a 1997 one? Was it by accident, on purpose, or? <laughs> I, I, I can try to find the pictures. Uh, I, I don't know if you will see it with the uh, with the screen. Uh, we love at La Chablisien, we don't do wine just to sell it on the year. We do wine for aging and we love to compare uh, our uh, wine with other. So it was this one with the old label. So you can see Petit Chablis from La Chablisien and vintage 1996. This is the old uh, label from La Chablisien. So La Chablisienne will be a one century old winery in the three years, in the 2023. So we are hoping to, to do some events and uh, some special cuvée. And uh, why not uh, release some very old, old vintage from La Chablisienne? It will be nice. All right. And uh, just uh, also to to talk about the other apparition from Chablis, because uh, we also sell with Wine Connection some Chablis, Premier Cru and Grand Cru. To give you an idea what you will have with the other appellation, uh, if you compare Petit Chablis with the Chablis, the main difference will be the soil. So I show you the soil of Petit Chablis. On the Chablis, it will be Kimmer region soil. So it's uh, all the fossils of oysters. Basically, it was the soil under the ocean long, long time ago. And this will bring a lot of more minerality. So it will be a very crispy, crispy, crispy wine. So it's why we advise to pair it with uh, seafood and especially oyster. 
We have a festival in Chablis. You have to come next time. This year it will be canceled, unfortunately, but oyster producer come in Chablis and Chablis producer go to wine, uh, oyster region. It's a, uh, we share wine and oyster. So it's very nice. I'm an oyster lover, so I enjoy it. And uh, if you go on the Premier Cru, you will have more deepness on the wine. We still having a Kimmer region soil, but we'll have more complexity, more deepness. And if you go on the Grand Cru, Grand Cru in Chablis, it's only 100 hectares. So very small part. And uh, we use some oak. We do uh, around 20 months of aging on leaves. So very, very deep and uh, complex wine. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying the different categories between uh, the different aroma profiles that you might find. Uh, what, uh, I have a question to rebound on that. Uh, what are the different levels that you're gonna find in terms of soil and climate? So what differentiates, not the taste, but um, maybe climate and the grapes, what differentiates a Grand Cru from a Premier Cru and to a Chabi wine? Is there a difference? Uh, you mentioned the soils definitely, but is there like yes. a certain age of vines? There's some regula regulation around the, the aging, etc. So you mean be between the different Petit Chablis, Chablis, Premier Cru and Grand Cru? So there is a three different. Uh, the first one is the soil. Portlandian for the Petit Chablis, Kimmeridgean for the rest. The second uh, difference will be the slope. If you go on the Petit Chablis vineyard, it will be flat. If you start going on the Chablis, it will be a little bit sloppy. Then on the Premier Cru, it's more sloppy and Grand Cru is very, very sloppy. And also the sun exposition will be very important. So Petit Chablis, so it's flat, so we don't have a special sun exposition. If you go on the Chablis, it's more east, west, or sometimes south. And if you go on the Premier Cru, it's more southeast. And Grand Cru, it's uh, plenty south. So this will uh, bring to the wine different uh, term of maturity of the grape. And it will bring uh, the complexity. Okay, all right. Thank you for clarifying uh, that for me. And for everybody else listening in as well. And whenever you're confronted with the label and you see you're confused between Petit Chabi and Chabi, at least you'll know why. Um, I'm going to go over and see if anybody has some feedback or would, would like to share their thoughts on the wine. I'm going to go head over to Mrs. Eve. All right, Mrs. Eve, I'm unmuting you now. Hi, Eve. Can you hear me? I think she might be a bit shy to participate. No worries. I'm going to ask maybe Mr. Steven if he has any comments or feedback that he'd like to make on the wine. All right, what can I do? Mr. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah, go uh, ahead. No, I think oh, it's all good. No. Oh, a couple of Stephen Monks. Um, I've got a quick question for you, Thibault. Um, So um, it's probably not to do with your wine itself, but the industry itself in general. Um, one of my biggest concerns is, you know, having been locked up for two months at home, um, I, you know, my wife and I drank probably a bottle a night, if not more. Um, and so if everyone else is doing the same, how much supply is actually left in Singapore? Um, I mean, how many months worth of wine is there for us to survive without sort of, you know, being locked up? And, you know, I know because in France, you've had many of the vineyards who have got a lot of bottles, but they can't move it, right? Because they're trying to turn that into alcohol to sell it to the government. And then whilst at our end, we're, our concern is what happens when you run out of alcohol? So from France, it's still available. Uh, it's still allowed to ship uh, wine. So we don't have any issue to ship wine in Singapore or other region in the world. Uh, our main concern was uh, because uh, in France and especially in the rest of Europe, restaurant was totally closed. 
And I think Europe, Europe was not uh, reactive like uh, Asia. Asia made a lot of uh, this kind of testing or internet sale to support uh, and follow, continue to deliver the wine. In, the, in Europe, it was more slow. So we're still shipping wine in, the, in Singapore and everywhere in the world. Is that, is that by air or by, by ship? Uh, by ship, I think. A ship, right? Angela, Angela can uh, help us. By ship for us, yeah. By ship for us. Right. So that, that, that supply chain hasn't been broken. It's still coming in. And I don't have to worry about having to go, you know, like treat it like toilet paper. And buy, buy <laughs> buffalo. <laughs> no, you guys should be able to get some, your, your daily dose of Chablis wine, Chablis wine with us so far. Uh, especially all the different wines that we have from them. If you guys want to do a tasting, like a vertical tasting of the Petit Chablis, the Chablis and the Grand Cru, no worries, we, we, we'll still have supply for that. But I, I, do, I do know where the question is coming from. We did have some, uh, definitely the oh, shipments from Europe were affected uh, with the COVID, especially from other countries like Spain and Italy. And just about the lockdown in uh, Chablis. So Chablis is a very, very small village. It's only 2,000 people living in Chablis. So the lockdown was uh, looking like a normal Sunday day. <laughs> So nobody on the street, like every Sunday in Chablis. And uh, people uh, still working on the vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the wineries still uh, open, but there is just taking care about uh, not inviting people or it's just precaution. Okay. Yeah. That's good in la... You know, our yeah. concern is that, you know, you're not going to have enough people picking the grapes, for example, because of all that was going on. And yeah. you know, see what's going on it, in the as well with the on primer. So, you know, obviously the concern is how much, how sustainable is, is the French wine business? Um, yeah, we are, we are lucky because uh, 2018 was a very great vintage in Chablis. So we're still having a uh, wine to sell. 19 was uh, kind of nice. We, we did like uh, minus 30% in the volume. And uh, the coming vintage, uh, so far, so good. Uh, we just have some uh, spring frost. And uh, so far, we have a very sunny day. For example, today, it's like 26, 27 uh, degrees outside. So yeah, we, we will have wine to sell. So it's uh, good news. Good to hear. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. And the harvest, uh, normally the harvest, it's uh, during September. And this year should be end of August or very early September. Are you expecting a good vintage for t uh, 2019, uh, 2020? Uh, yes, we are expecting a good vintage. Okay, a lot of kind of, uh, Yeah, kind of 18, we hope. Uh, we are just afraid to have some ale. So we cross the finger to don't have ale, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So actually to rebound on that, so you mentioned hail and the fact that the harvest is going to be earlier. So I'm guessing climate change has really affected how you guys uh, are taking care of the vineyard. Is it also affecting the way you guys function as well? Because you're gonna have to harvest earlier, etc. cetera. Um, how, 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 what, have you been able to observe so far? So to give you an idea about global warming, uh, long time ago, the harvest was late September, early October. Now we are more early September. So it's a big changement. So in Chablis, between when we got flower on the vine and when we do the harvest, it's 100 days. So it's still the same since uh, century and century. So this don't change. Uh, just the big effect is we can have a dryness and lost some grape. But the best will be to have some uh, rain just uh, in August. It will be wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, be, the vines will definitely need a bit of refreshment. <laughs> um, I actually have a question regarding back to the wine. So you recommended it goes with salads and finger food, 
but what would you personally eat with it? So if you open this bottle when you're drinking it, what does it make you feel like eating? Because everybody has their own food pairing uh, ideas. Like, yeah, I was eating with curry, uh, kind of with uh, food as well. So, so Petit Chablis, is every, it's a very easy to pair the Petit Chablis with a plate. Uh, on my pe personal uh, drinking, I drink it with some friend on a terrace in the bar or restaurant or just at my uh, home uh, it's it's drinking uh, alone like uh, you don't have to need a special plate or but it's uh, i love to drink it with some uh, goat cheese it's very nice because this uh, flavor of pear will pair very nice with uh, uh, the goat cheese and also with uh, kind of sushi or spicy food also, because it's very refreshing. So curry, it's a good idea. And uh, yeah, everything with a spicy also, it's a good. Also, it have a, it works well with Asian food then. <laughs> yeah. It works well with Asian food. All right. Okay, let me see. I'm, I have another question for you, but I'm gonna go and see if anybody else has any questions they'd like to ask so far. Anybody raise their hands? Let me see. And uh, if you want to know more about the location of Chablis, we are very close to Champagne region. So the first vineyard of Champagne is starting just 30 or 40 kilometers from uh, Chablis. We are very close. Well, okay, so you are very close. So in Champagne, they do use Chardonnay as well in their sparkling wines. Yeah. So I'm guessing in Burgundy, you guys also produce sparkling wines. Maybe you, if you want to elaborate a little yeah, bit on because that. <laughs> on the Champagne region, the Chardonnay vineyard is more located on the south. And uh, if you take a map of France, we are located on the south of Champagne, kind of. All right, so you guys can, I believe I tried the, in the past, the Crémant de Bourgogne. So can you guys Crémant produce Bourgogne. that? Uh, in Chablis, not, but oh. very close to Chablis, we can. And uh, for example, you have some Crémant de Bourgogne coming uh, like at the border between Champagne and Burgundy. So you can just have a street or a highway or a road just making the difference between the Champagne appellation and Crémant de Bourgogne appellation. All right, so for those who don't know, just Cremant is sparkling wine that's produced out of the Champagne region. Okay, okay, so I don't see any hands raised just yet. So I have another question for you, Thibaut. Uh, so you've been in the, you're saying you've been in the Chablis region for quite a while, so um, you're very familiar with the wines and whatnot. Uh, but I just want to check with you, did you, ever, did you start in the wine industry or did you do a totally different uh, type of job or studies before ending up in wine? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm born and raised in Burgundy. <laughs> so very deep uh, Burgundy guy. Uh, I make some study on international business, working for a imp wine importer in California during uh, two years, and then uh, working for other winery in Chablis. Okay, so, so yeah. born and raised in Burgundy, the wine was already coursing through your veins and brought yeah. you to work with La Chablisienne. Yeah. Um, I'm done. Uh, yeah. yeah. Today, Chablis is uh, very important for Burgundy. To give you an idea about what represents Chablis, Chablis is the most famous white wine appellation in the world. It's like Champagne for the sparkling, Bordeaux for the red, Chablis for the white. So we are lucky about this notoriety and uh, we take care a lot about the quality of the wine and especially at La Chablisienne because uh, we do a lot of juice selection. If you come uh, in Chablis during the harvest, uh, at La Chablisienne especially, you will see that uh, we receive the grape and we do a first testing and we give a grade and uh, it's the first step of selection. Then we do some laboratory analysis, uh, checking the sugar content, acidity. It's the second uh, uh, step of uh, selection. And then once the wine is finished, we do a third uh, step of selection. Good. 
Good to know. Uh, well, since you were mentioning La Chabizienne, I wanted to know, for those who are watching here and for those who will watch this later on YouTube, um, have you any recommendations uh, when, if some, some of us were to come visit uh, uh, Chablis and La Chabizienne, are there any visits you can recommend? Do you guys do visits or whatnot, like wine experiences? Don't hesitate to share. So you can come in Chablis, it's uh, very easy. We are just like one hour and a half south of Paris. And uh, at La Chablisienne, we have a nice uh, wine shop where you can uh, taste all the appellation we have. So we have more, more than uh, 30 different appellations, going from uh, regular Burgundy Chardonnay to Grand Cru. So you can taste everything, it's totally free. So it's a nice way to discover and uh, to show our wine. And uh, you can do some visit on the vineyard, uh, going up to the Grand Cru. It's my favorite place in Chablis. You go up to the Grand Cru and you have a very nice point of view on the whole Chablis region. When's the best time to, um, when would, when would it, when it, when's the best time to do like a, a wine trip to um, Chablis or Bourgogne or, or even Bordeaux or any other parts of France? I think the, maybe the, the best one would be during the harvest, so sep September, but it's also the busiest uh, month to make some tasting. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, people are already busy with the harvest, but uh, on the vineyard, the best part yeah, is September. Uh, I personally love uh, spring because you can see the first flower. The, f the smell of the f vine flower is very special. Uh, you have some uh, fragrance perfume doing uh, doing perfume with this flavor, but uh, yes, spring is also good uh, good time. Thank you. All right, thank you for for letting us know, Thibault. So, if anybody has any plans to go and visit uh, the Chablis region, don't hesitate to swing by Le Chablisien. Uh, I have one last question for you. Uh, so on the bottle, for those who have the bottles at home, at home you've got a golden figure on it. Uh, this, um, this lady, lady? does. So, yes, the lady. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I will, uh, I have the, her. So this woman angel, it's, uh, it's an homage to our history. So we talked about the history of La Chablisienne and a woman was working uh, very hard on the vineyard and uh, it's kind of a homage to those women who create La Chablisienne. All right, so whenever you guys see that, uh, that little sigil, you'll know this because of the powerful women who are behind creating this winery. Okay, well, perfect. Thanks for letting me know. Fun fact for, for those who are watching. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to check if anybody has any few last questions that they'd like to ask Thibault or any feedback that they'd like to give on the wine. Uh, don't hesitate to do so now. Let me see if anybody got any hand raised. Sorry, it's me again. Um, just a quick question. Is 2018, this uh, Petit Chablis, is this regarded one of the better vintages? Yes, 18 was a... Uh... I mean, uh, everybody in Chablis say it's uh, the vintage of the century. Okay. So I should the, come order more from, um, <laughs> <laughs> from Wine Connection, right? <laughs> I've got to get the name right because I've been to so many wine tasting. This week, so. I was talking uh, last year with a very old guy in Chablis. He told me that the last uh, vintage like this was uh, 1947. Wow. So it's only once or twice per century. Okay. And it was, uh, nobody was expecting this kind of quality and volume uh, because it was a very dry month. To give you an idea, between uh, April to August, we just had, uh, I think, 20 millimeter of uh, rain. Yeah, you had so hail as well, right? Uh, not uh, just a little bit, but not very causing uh, a lot of da da damage. But uh, just before the harvest, we had some rain and he bring uh, to the grape a very 
perfect maturity, perfect uh, flavor. It was very wonderful vintage. Mm. Wow. Okay. And, and you guys have enough stock as well, right, Angela? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to join a do bulk order for me right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is really nice. It's really drinkable. It's so like it has so much fruit in this. It's everything right, that you're looking for in the Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, 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 that's why we joined the seminar today. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, 18 was wonderful uh, because we have a very nice balance between acidity, minerality, and fruit. Some vintage, uh, 15 was like that. We had a lot of fruit because it was a very warm vintage, uh, but less acidity. And 18, it's a very well balanced uh, vintage. Perfect. Oh, good to know. So yeah, if you guys are enjoying 2018, it's uh, the vintage to buy, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> to, I can give you some tips about uh, different vintage. So we talked about eight, 18. 17 was a typical Chablis style. So we had a high acidity, high minerality. So it's a good uh, vintage to pair with seafood. We have a kind of uh, salinity on the wine. So perfect pairing to, with seafood. 16 was a very difficult vintage in Chablis. We had uh, some hail storm on May 27, June 13, and June 16. So we did a half harvest because we lost uh, the half of the vineyard due to the hail, but the remain uh, vineyard was beautiful. So we had a very low stock and a low harvest, but the quality was nice. Uh, 15 was a very warm vintage, so more typical Burgundy style uh, vintage, but with Chablis typicity, of course, due to the soil. And uh, 14 was uh, also a typical uh, Chablis tasty vintage, like 17. Okay, and before I, I was not working in Chablis, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and so you hope 2020 vintage will be a good vintage, right? Yeah, also uh, we hope so because uh, in the French language, 2020, uh, c'est 2020, who mean uh, wine, wine. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Spelled differently, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, we say it's a uh, vintage for the winery. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope I hope the uh, the vintage will be good for you guys at the end of the year, the harvest. Uh, so as you're saying in August. Um. So if nobody has any has any questions they'd like to share with Thibaut Roche. Uh, I'm going to bring the session to an end. Uh, if you guys have any questions though that pop up to mind that you'd like to ask Thibault in the days following this session, please don't hesitate to uh, shoot me an email uh, and I will forward them to him and get the answers back to you. Okay, well, just before I bring the session to an end, I like to do this at the end. For those who don't mind being on camera, I take a small screenshot of everybody cheersing with their glass. Uh, if you guys are ready to cheers with your glasses. Okay, for those who don't mind and are comfortable for being on camera. Okay. And one, two, and three. Perfect, got it. <laughs> Thank you guys. So All just right. to end up, I would like to wish you a happy Chardonnay day. And uh, if you have the opportunity to come in Chablis, don't hesitate to talk with Angela and uh, we can organize something uh, very special for a customer from uh, Wine Connection. No, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll be Merci, there. Thank you. Santé. Merci. Cheers. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Well, thank you very much for those kind words, Thibault. I uh, wish you guys all a wonderful evening. Thank you, Thibault, once again for co-hosting this session with me. And I wish you guys a great Chardonnay day. Enjoy your wine with or without food. And I'll see you guys all next time on our next day thing. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Thibault. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. 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 Bye